Ever since I started messing with these electronic bits, I've kind of wanted to do something with one of these seven segment displays. Um, partly because my TTL Logic Kit has has a controller for them in it, but partly because they're just, you know, kind of cool. I don't know what the pinout is for this, so I'm going to attempt to look that up. And the only number on here is this, so... Okay, this might be the data sheet for this. The, the number matches, at least. This is a common cathode. So I think that means that all the LEDs share the same cathode. Um, single digit, seven segment display. Okay. Physical dimensions. Yep, common cathode. So all the LEDs share one cathode. I guess that means it's on pin three and eight. And then the different segments have letters, and then the DP must be decimal point. Okay, so pin one is this one. I guess you're just supposed to know how the pins go. It doesn't tell me, like, where pin two is, so what's the pattern? I guess it, it probably goes like this. I don't know, I guess we'll find out. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook it up. We need to identify the cathodes. So that says pin 3 and pin 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's the center pins on the top and the bottom, I bet. So we'll start there, and I think what I'll do is I'll hook that up, and then maybe hook up a button to one of the segments, and we'll make sure that it turns on and off, and then see how that goes. Okay, I'm guessing that we need, I'm guessing we need resistors because these are LEDs and I don't, I really don't want to burn them out. It doesn't mention anything about there being a resistor in the data sheet. So I'm going to assume that we need a resistor on each individual segment. Like, like logically it seems like I could put one resistor, you know, here where the, the cathodes are. But I suspect that doesn't work because if you had more than one segment turned on, then they're they're each going to become dimmer. So at least I would think. So I bet you need one resistor per segment. I'm just going to put one resistor in. I'm gonna tie this one, which is I think segment A, and we'll see if it lights up. Alright, there we go. It does light up. Excellent. I mean I guess it should. So that matches the diagram, I think. No, that does not match the diagram. Oh, right. Of course, they. <laughs> I don't know why they do these things. Like, they have segments A, B, C, D, E, F, G, right? But they're not wired that way. Like, pin 1 is not A, for example. That's very confusing. All right, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire up resistors for each of the segments and prepare for further circuitry. Okay, I think I have all of these segments connected, so I'm just gonna test them real quick by putting a lead into the plus and then seeing if each segment lights up. So let's see. Whoops, nope, I actually see a mistake already. Hang on. Okay, that should be more correct. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep, yep. Yep. And, yep. Okay, cool. All the segments seem to work. I think that was all of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, there's eight. They call it a seven segment, L seven segment LED display, except there's actually eight because of the optional decimal point. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook up one of my uh, chips that can drive this. So it can take a binary, uh, I think it's called a BCD, and then it can display it on a single seven segment display output. So that, that should be kind of cool. Binary coded decimal is like binary, except it only supports the numbers from 0 to 9. At least that's how I understand it. So it uses 4 bits to display 0 to 9 instead of what would normally be in binary, 0 to 15. 
but I guess it's done that way because it's a lot easier for a bunch of things. Uh, I noticed that in the TTL kit, I have a bunch of things. Are There's like decade counters and all that stuff. It counts to 10 in binary. So a lot of stuff seems to be BCD encoded, which I wasn't really previously aware of. We need a decoder driver for a BCD to 7 decoder driver. Here's one. And there's another one, and they have different numbers. So I'm not sure what the difference is. So I guess I should look up the data sheets on that. Okay, here's one of them. Uh, SN74LS47N. This one is a common anode. Okay, so I bet the other one's common cathode. This says direct drive common anode digital tube. Yep, okay, the one that ends in 8 is a digital tube common cathode, and these displays are common cathode. So I need to use the one with an 8. Okay, we have an SN74LS48N. That should be the right one. Now let's look on the data sheet for the pinout. So they have inputs A, D, C, B, and the outputs are all on this side, but of course they're not in the right order. <laughs> it seems like it would make a lot of things easier if these things were in logical order, but okay. Maybe there's an order here that I just am not seeing. Um, all right, first of all, I think we'll put it in and we'll get it powered up. And then and then we'll wire it up to the segment, the seven segment display. And then I think I'll wire a dip switch up to the inputs. And hopefully we can see it counting. Okay, in theory, I think the chip is hooked up to the display. So now I need to hook up an input. I think 1K works as a pull down. I, I forget now, I'm not sure why. It's been, a, it's been a little bit since I recorded my last videos. I thought I had the idea that 1K is good for pull down and 10K is good for pull up. That I got that idea from somewhere. Um, I don't know, I guess we'll find out. Now I just need to hook the switch to the right inputs. Okay, I think it's hooked up. Now I will attempt to turn the power on and see what happens. Okay, it works. We have zero. That's great, because these are all off. So let's do one. Good. And then two. Good. Two plus one should be three. Good. Four. Four plus one is five. Four plus two is six. Four plus two plus one is seven. Eight. Nine. Nine. And where's ten? Ten should be this one, shouldn't it? Oh, right. It can't show. It can't display ten. It clearly has other display outputs. For those other cases that aren't numbers, maybe a trying to approximate hex, I'm not sure. All right, well, that's pretty cool. I'm not sure what those other pins are that I didn't use. I didn't use pin uh, three, four, or five. So let's check on the data sheet and see what three, four, and five are for. Okay, pin three, LT. I don't know what that means. Pin 4, BI, RBO, I don't know what that is either. 5, RBI. Okay, I have no idea what those are. Let's see if it says it anywhere. The chip has zero killing input and output control. RBI and RBO, I don't know what that means. One control port is shared by the extinguishing lamp and the extinguishing output control, which can be used together to realize the extinguishing control of multi-digit digital display. I don't know what that means. LT is Digital Tube Quality Detection Control. I have no idea what that means. Let's try tying one of those to, to high or low just with a, with a jumper and see what it does. So I'll do that with pin three. So if I tie it to low, well, everything turns on, okay? Tie it to high, nothing happens. So I'm not really sure what that's supposed to do, but probably we should leave it tied high. Okay, this one, uh, green here, is on the fourth pin, and it's labeled 
B-I-R-B-O. I don't know what it means, but let's tie it low. The display is going off. High is what it is now. The yellow wire is on the one labeled RBI. Low doesn't seem to do anything. High doesn't seem to do anything. So I'm not sure what that is. These might be somehow related. But I'm not sure how. I guess I'll have to do more reading on what those even mean. The blanking input BI must be open or held at a high logic value when performing functions 0 through 15 are desired. When a low logic value is applied directly to the banking input, blanking input, all segment outputs are low regardless of any other level. Oh. So maybe BI is acting almost like an enable disable for the whole chip. So I guess if you had a bus with multiple ones of these on it, that's how you would say use use this digit or something like that. Although I'm not really seeing that effect here unless I've got my numbers mixed up. Pin 5 is RBI, right? Pin 5, RBI. And down here in the notes it says, when low is applied to RBI, all segment outputs are low regardless of the level of any other output. I don't know if that's correct, is it? I'm, I'm seeing zero. Something's off there because it's, it's not matching. That doesn't match my understanding. When ripple blanking interval and inputs A, B, C, and D are at the low level with the lamp test input high, all segment outputs go low and the ripple blanking output goes low. When a blanking input ripple blanking output is open or held high and a low is applied to the lamp test input, all segments are high. I don't know. I don't quite follow that logic down there, but I guess it doesn't matter. The point is, is that <laughs> the counter works, and that's pretty cool. It's really cool to see it essentially converting binary into decimal digits. Well, I don't really have anything else planned. My main excuse was to, to mess around with the seven segment display and get something working on there, and we did. So I guess that's the end for now. Um, it might be fun to build a something that just counts, I guess, maybe with a timer. So I'm going if, if, to do something like that. I'll have to figure out how to create some kind of a clock or repeating cycle, you know, of some kind, and then probably hook it into one of these other chips in the kit, which I think is called a decade counter. So that would that might be my next project. We'll see. It's it's probably kind of an adaptation or just a simple expansion on this where I keep the display module here but just feed the number as an output from yet another chip and and hopefully have it progress up, you know, from 0 to 9 at least. I mean, maybe not very exciting, but it'll be fun to hook that up and see something a circuit operating on its own. Right, but I guess I think to do that, I, I will have to figure out how to create some kind of a timer. I have a 555 timer chip, which I could try using at some point. Um, and that might be the way to go. So we'll see. I'll try that out in a later video and we'll see how that goes. All right, that's it for now. Thanks. Bye.